okay something happened. Ooh. I don't know. That's Sam leaned up against the projector switch. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think it's one of the buttons. Video? Talk is ended. <laughs> on, off, and no. Uh, it's going back on now. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave that. that it? Uh. Um, some of the things that you, you should realize regarding uh, implementa implementation of tools like these is that you have to decide what's the right language, what's the right binding you want to use, and what you, if you do you want to use Cucumber, or do you want to use uh, a specific, another specification tool, or even just unit testing. What is your shop comfortable with? And if, now my suggestion is if you uh, have a shop full of manual QA testers, Gherkin is a very great way of slowly introducing them to the concept of scripting. Um, another thing that you have to realize is once you get this implemented, there's going to be a lot of hesitation from your manual QAs. They're going to think that, oh, my job's done, you know, I'm not you know, clicking and doing this and that. But one of the things you have to remind them is no longer are they just click monkeys. They're not just clicking here, clicking there, clicking there, and then looking at results. Now they switch roles from click monkey to an actual QA analyst. My scripts are done running. What failed? Why did it fail? Can I give this to a developer to get fixed? So the, very, the, the thing that I really want you guys to come out of this with is that if you have many QAs in your shop and you don't think they want to code, Gherkin's a very good tool to use, and Water itself is an easy API that if you have some QAs that can code a little bit, Ruby's a very easy language to learn. It's not scary or intimidating. And the Water APIs, as you can see, you have your browser object, you have your text field, select list, divs, whatever. Then you have an identifier, your ID, name, class, whatever you want, and then you have your action. So it's not a very difficult uh, thing, uh, tool to use for your QAs who are not necessarily the coding type. But if, but if they are, they have a little inclination, then Water's a great tool. But if they have no inclination, go to Cucumber, go to go to Gherkin, because that they can understand. First I do this, then I do that, then I do this, then I expect this. And then write your backend code to accommodate for that. One of the things that I've done so far at West Point is a lot of our elements, unfortunately, are, uh, are in, a, um, in, in, data, in spreadsheets and databases. So one thing that's easy for me to help you know, develop these tools for them faster is to call these elements from where they are and then run them through a uh, database trip. So if there's any changes to the elements, you just change it in the database instead of going to the backend code anymore. Um, it's, it's little things like that, but always realize that do not get stuck with vendor lock-in. If, you, if you're paying $10,000 for QTP, $20,000 for uh, Microsoft's tools or whatever, that's money that you're wasting because the tools exist. They're free. They're open source. They have a vibrant community behind them. So why spend your hard-earned cash when you could join the community and also give back to the community when you understand the tool better? So that's my talk. Thank you. environment, Windows environment? <laughs> it's a .NET shop that I work at, uh, so it's mostly a Windows environment. Same here, so I can't say Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm the, and it's funny that you say that because I'm actually the only Linux guy in the whole building, so if anything happens to a Linux server, they go straight to me, even though I'm not a Linux admin. <laughs> <laughs> they, I just Google it at that point and go, okay, this is what you do. <laughs> have you ever looked at Autoit before? I have, and there's two things with Autoit that uh, both are great and a curse. Okay. Um, the great thing about Autoit is 
Again, I'm dealing with legacy web pages, uh, old ASP.NET pages. So they weren't coded like sane people would code. <laughs> you have weird JavaScript dialogues that sometimes <laughs> pop up twice or three times in a row. And but to change it would take an act of Congress. <laughs> so what I what I use Autowitch for is just a backend threading, threaded processor for when I run the, these scripts, the first thing I do is I spool up a thread with Autowitch that literally just looks for JavaScript pop-ups. And if it meets certain criteria, click on it. If it doesn't, fail what I'm doing and then move forward. Unfortunately, with Water Classic, it doesn't close pop-ups very easily. It really doesn't. But with Water Whatever, it actually does. There's a whole API for your alerts. So you can handle the JavaScript hell <laughs> that, uh, that I have to handle easier with Water Whatever. Well, I know this is a you know, Linux thing, but since I deal with similar things, because uh, I've had issues with Ottawa in like IE 10 and 11 testing there. Have you seen that with anything else? No, because the way that I use Auto is that it, it has to find a window with the certain uh, title bars. Oh, okay. Once it finds that title, and I'm using it through Ruby, it, it, I'm using the Win32 OLA libraries for that. Okay. So it's uh, it's a lot easier. And if I, I wish I had the code that you could see it, um, because it's again it's very easy. It just loops constantly every uh, uh, a, a constant loop that just every one second checks. Hey, are there any open JavaScript browsers? Uh, is the text within them this? If it is, let's fail the text. If it isn't, just close the SOB. So. <laughs> Alright. So. Any other questions? Alright. Cool. Thank you. Chaos monkey last time. No. Are you familiar with that term? Oh, yeah.